I wake up to a familiar face right by my eyes. Wonder who this could be. No idea. My body reflexively froze up when I saw someone so close to my face that our foreheads were touching. I was so shocked to see this girl, I was about to reflexively push her off of me, but I stopped myself at the very last moment. She was way too close, but I didn't feel threatened. Probably because this is little Michiru, who we got to meet in the last episode, who I absolutely love already. She was such a great addition to the whole story and plotline of this. It made it so much better because now Mitru is not all over us all the time and she has to compete with herself, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Just such a such a great twist on the story. Mitru. She was just as light, bright-eyed, and innocent as in my memories, and above all, just as young. I had to think about it for a moment before I remembered. Good morning, Mitru. She wasn't Mitru. She was little Mitru. She was a younger Mitru, a girl who appeared thanks to the powers of the pocket watch. Oh boy, that was absolutely hilarious, her introduction. I loved it so much. Yesterday, after verifying the circumstances of Crow, I asked Didi to look after little Mitru. We had all discussed the biggest issue at hand, where little Mitru was going to live for the time being. Little Mitru was suddenly dragged into an unfamiliar place, or rather, a very familiar place in an unfamiliar time. She would have to live with the residents of the house, who are strangers to her, and this time as well. Even if that didn't bother her yet, it might start bothering her after a while. Regardless of the reason why it happened, I had a responsibility to take care of her. I had to watch over little Mitru until she returned home safely. Partly as a result of that, when little Mitru asked to sleep with me in my own bed, I was happy to let her. Because she's not all over us. <laughs> Unlike the other Mitru. <laughs> my head hurt at the mere recollection of everything that happened last night. Nah, don't worry about me, I'm getting up now. Yeah, I feel great. I'm not getting constantly pounced on by my sister. It's great. Wonderful. Motioning little Mitru to climb off me so I could get out of bed, I then sat down with my arm around her. Her body was warm and soft. Unlike the other Mitru who smelled like fresh flowers, little Mitru smelled sweet like candy. You know, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, so I do. You're quite the diligent one, Mitru. <laughs> Little Mitru smiled sweetly as I patted her on the head and tried to fix her hair. It warmed my heart to see that pure, innocent smile on her face. Even the present day Mitru is cute and innocent. Okay, now you're just lying to yourself, my guy. But she's too honest about her desires. It makes her different. Of course, it's probably better than just bottling your feelings up inside all the time. Okay, he's got a point. I brushed little Mitra's hair and looked at the still broken pocket watch. Maybe it had repaired itself a bit since yesterday, but that was probably just my imagination. I had no idea when it would be fixed, but freaking out about it wouldn't help anybody. It'd be better to stay calm for little Mitra's sake. Oh boy. But I'm just curious, how is big Mitra going to react to having her around all the time? She didn't take it too well yesterday. She she went from like, oh, this must be our love child, even though it's a little bit early. And I was like, whoa, let's back it up here. Uh, to seeing her as a rival, which I think is absolutely hilarious. My determination to stay calm needed a or calm ended up only lasting for a few minutes. The determination was shattered by both Didi, who couldn't wait any longer to eat breakfast. Sounds like Didi, she loves food. And Mitru, who sensed impending calamity barging into my room. Yeah, that's all, that sounds like their characters. Couldn't do anything to prevent my room from becoming crowded yet again. We hadn't had the chance to discuss everything we needed to do last night, so this was perfect for me. Today was a weekday, so putting the morning hours to use like this was for the best. Of course, since it was a weekday, we had school later on. I see. You're pretty mature, Michiru. I like how she's all happy, and then the other Michiru is just like... Why don't you ever tell that to me? I'm mature, too. She smiled happily when I patted her on the head, but her smile didn't assuage my worries. In fact, I was really worried about her staying home alone. We had explained her appearance to the other people in the house, so she would be able to stay here and be treated as a guest. However, the issue with that is she wouldn't be treated as anything more than a guest. There would be people in the house if she needed anything, but she'd have to spend some time on her own. 
心配でしたら私が休んでお世話いたしましょうかあいえ DD さんにそこまでお願いできません You know, I wouldn't mind if DD wasn't at school. Then maybe she wouldn't blurt out important secrets to everybody. She's right, we're trying to keep this a secret from our parents to start with, too. If DD took a long break from school to watch Mitra, our parents would undoubtedly be informed of that. And if it came to that, our parents would inquire as to why she was skipping school, and the problem of Lil Mitra's presence would make things even more of a mess. I'm not even getting into having to explain the whole business with the pocket watch either. If I just took today off, though. Oh no, I'm fine. I'm just wondering if you get lonely or anything. Wow. What a, what a good sister, you guys. What a great sister. I wish we had a sister like this. Oh wait, we do. But she's become perverted. Maybe playing hooky would be overdoing it after all. Alright, thanks. I'll give you a call at lunchtime. You can call me if you need me, too. Do you know how to use a cell phone? Little Mitra took her phone out of her pocket and confidently held it up for me to see. It was a phone we found in the house the night before, complete with GPS capability. It was a child's phone that could only send text messages and make calls, but it was more than enough for her. I felt a bit relieved to know that little Mitra would be okay, but at that moment, the other Mitra pushed her way in front of my face. She was wearing quite a disgruntled frown. Mitra, what's wrong? Everything is great! We're having such an awesome time, aren't you? Alright, you can tell me anything. What's up? I don't know, whatever could you mean? I don't know, whatever could you there's a term for people who like younger kids, and we're not going to go there. <laughs> we're not going to, to start down that route. Liking our sister was worse, already the worst thing, so I don't want to go worse than that. Well, thanks for giving me your totally unabridged train of thought. And quit calling yourself cunning. You're cute, whether past or present. Whoa, okay. I'm really surprised she didn't react there. That was kind of a compliment for her. I don't know, I almost feel bad. I feel like we're really like cutting Mitru off from being able to express, like Ray said, how she really feels all the time, being honest. I don't know, maybe we'll get to see more of her actual personality at school, because I feel like right now she feels very threatened and, and she's not really sure. It's not like she can really be too mad at little Mitru, because that's kind of her, you know? But it is fun to see her get jealous of herself. See you later, Mitru. Thanks for seeing us off. I know, little Mitra is such an angel. She can never do any wrong. <laughs> I love how she's telling her not to cause any trouble. Like, she knows that she's a troublemaker. A good judge of character, I like that. I love everything about this interaction. It's like Little Me True is being the mom to Big Me True, and Big Me True wanted to be the mom to Little Me True. Oh, uh, this is. It just keeps going. It's the joke that keeps on giving. I've heard of people telling their past selves to study more, but it's really rare for someone's past self to tell them to study more. No thinking about it, expecting into those situations to produce results was a lost cause. Oh, do you have any advice for her, Mitru? I'm sure that there are some things I want to think of because I'm a guy, and we don't want to leave everything up to the maids. She's just now realizing that she can take advantage of the situation to get closer. Because if she thinks about it, if he gets closer to little Mitru, he's technically getting closer to big Mitru. 
疑似的な子育てを通じて愛情も深まり倫理観も一気に飛び越えられる Wow, you really thought this one out then, huh? Hey, Michiru? お任せください私もミチルのことを心配でしたからミチルこれからも仲良くしましょうね助けてディディーディーディーway too obvious you were just doing mental gymnastics about helping her out would be to your own advantage i'm so glad to hear someone else use the term mental gymnastics i love saying that like that's pretty much like how you i don't know you make something work out in your favor in your mind like you you just kind of do whatever to make it happen like whatever you can do to justify it <sighs> the great term Can you not do this in public? Please, me true. There's other people around. Even if her real motive was way too obvious, I was still a little happy to see her this way. I felt like Mitru was finally acting her age, perhaps because she was talking to her younger self. Normally, Mitru always acted like she was above it all. I didn't get to see Mitru confused or flustered like this very often. Uh, I'd hope not. That's literally herself. Good water. Yeah, great water. You know, make sure to stay hydrated, guys. Right, let's get moving. But I guess Mitru wouldn't be re really be Mitru if she didn't display that kind of behavior at all, either. Hmm. Yeah. How's the weather going for you guys? Is it good? Um, it is. I think it's sunny outside. It's, it's a nice day. Spent so much time talking with little Mitru, we ended up arriving at school later than usual. The bell rang just as we got to our respective classrooms. So that gave me time to, that gave me time to think about everything that happened since last night. I want to give little Mitra a present so she wouldn't be lonely staying home alone every day. But there was a problem. I didn't know what kind of present a little girl like her would want to receive. In fact, she would probably be happy no matter what I gave her, and that was all the more frustrating. Yeah, it, that would kind of suck to give a present to somebody that like would be happy getting anything from you. Because it's like, yeah, you could give them anything, but what can you give them that they like is truly meaningful? Like, because they already have this preconception that if you if they got anything from you, they'd be happy. So what do you give them that would really make them happy, you know? It's kind of like you have to figure that out. Because if you ask them, they'll just say anything. It's probably best to consult another girl in class about this sort of thing. And so, Makoto, let's go. The daughter of one of my relatives is staying with us. What kind of present do you think she would like? I asked Makoto first because she was the easiest to talk to. Also, she's one of my favorite girls, so I won't mind. I mean, to be fair, why don't we just look at our sister? What would our sister want from us? I feel like that's an easy indication because, I mean, it literally is our sister. She's seven years old. She's really wise beyond her years. She's very polite. <sighs> Dee Dee, why don't you stay home? Actually, I, I just want you to head home right now. Just just go home and watch her. Make sure she's alright, okay? Just just leave. Dee Dee had evidently overheard our conversation and she came over and decided to put in her two cents. <laughs> As she always does. Ah, uh, well, yeah, pretty much. Though, she's more the spitting image of Michiru as a kid. Makoto nodded several times, mumbling little nothings to herself as she thought it over. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, of course you would recommend a stuffed animal. I remember our little date. I see, I don't have any stuffed animals, but I might go buy one. 
女の子はみんな可愛いものが好きだからね。I don't know, guys like cute girls too, so. I had a few picture books at home too, but she'd probably be overjoyed to know that I bought something just for her. I wasn't in the know about what kind of stuffed animals were popular nowadays, but I could ask someone else about that. Why don't you just ask Makoto? Makoto literally loves stuffed animals. If Mitra isn't busy, I could ask her to come with me. Makoto san wa donna hon ga ski datta no desu ka? Watashi wa. I'm gonna open her mouth to speak, but suddenly froze in place. That probably wasn't the most flattering thought to have, but if I had a hunch that Makoto didn't read the same kind of books as other girls would. I love that Makoto has to kind of act like a cute girl sometimes. I mean, she likes stuffed animals and cute things like that. But then she likes going and watching, like, mafia, Yakuza type movies, too. So, I mean, I wouldn't say normal girls like to do that. So, that applies to picture books, too. I don't know, isn't that just manga? Isn't it okay if you could recommend something? I can't tell if she's like gonna say like some Yakuza type type book or if she's gonna be like, yeah, I like Fifty Shades of Grey. Goto's gaze fell lower and lower until she finally was just looking at the ground and mumbling. She really didn't have to push herself to give us an answer like that, though. Before I could say anything, Makoto looked up with determination in her eyes. Alright, fair enough, Makoto. Ran over to the other girls before I could stop her. I didn't expect her to do all that for me, but going there just to stop her would make things worse. So I decided to leave Dee Dee behind and go chase after Makoto. Dang it. Well, I tried to make it happen. I feel bad for dumping all this on her. I guess it was probably better to be grateful in these circumstances. I could tell that Makoto was a really dedicated girl from the way she'd insistently commit to finishing a task she'd started. It's a good trait to have. I don't have that trait, unfortunately. Um, I really wish I could I could finish things more, because it's like I play visual novels and I have a hard enough time finishing these. I I I do like them. I just have a hard time dedicating so much time to something that takes so long. I'm like these these games take like 50 hours, and I'm like, dang, that's a lot of time to commit to something. <laughs> Isn't that bad? I have a hard time committing 50 hours. Anyways, that dedicated girl spent the rest of her period asking other girls for advice. As a result, she was able to tell me specific children's stories and stuff animal brands to buy. In return, though, I ended up with her reputation as the kind-hearted big bro who buys nice things for the girls in his family. I don't think that's a bad reputation to have. All the same, she definitely helped me out, so I had to thank her for that. And it wasn't a hollow sort of thank you either. Ooh, we're gonna buy her a stuffed animal. We can just buy them both at the same time. Free at last. Once the last of the morning classes ended, I ran out of the classroom with my phone in my hand. Dee Dee might have been meaning to tell me something, but I decided to put off talking to her. Yes, let's go. Right now, since little Mitru was at home alone, I needed to give her a call. I texted her as well, but first period had ended, she might have been taking a nap then. After all, she hadn't responded to that text until the middle of fourth period. I knew that little Mitru was waiting for me to call her back, so I didn't want to wait until after lunch to do that. Walking down the hallway towards a more secluded area, I pulled up little Mitru's entry and my contacts. People were already giving me weird looks because of what happened this morning, trying to make a phone call in the classroom making me look make them look at me even weirder. After taking a quick glance around to make sure absolutely no one was around, I hit the call button. Yeah, it's me. Given how she answered my call and so maybe she was waiting for me. No, she definitely was waiting for me. You mentioned you had a nap. Are you still sleepy? I was about to say she still sounded kind of sleepy, but the second half of what she said caught me off guard. I'm happy to hear that, but wait, you slept in my room? We had a room prepared for her, but I had pretty much knew the reason why she did that before she could say it. Everyone likes my bed better. Little Mitra would have used Mitra's bedroom before. I guess she didn't like being told that she had to sleep in the guest bedroom. I guess it'd be natural she preferred to relax in somewhere that felt familiar. For example, her room. That's okay, then. More importantly, have you had lunch yet? Okay, I'm gonna stop with the phone thing. 
I thought it would be funny, but it's not. <laughs> it just makes me look very silly. I opted to change the subject instead of asking further about her sleeping in my bed, and asking her about lunch made her respond quite cheerfully. That's good to hear. What did you have for lunch? Wow, okay. That's quite the meal. Oh. That's good. I'm just glad it wasn't yogurt. Ooh. You did have yogurt parfait, huh? That sounds really good. Did you say thank you? Good, good. You're such a good girl. She really was. And oh, how I wished I could be there with her so I could pat her on the head. I like how he gives way more attention to little Mitru than he ever does the actual Mitru, the grown-up one. Hmm, I haven't had lunch yet. I'm gonna go eat after I get off the phone. You don't need to apologize. I wanted to talk to you. Where did her jovial energy from before disappear to? It seemed that she really felt bad about interrupting my lunch break. Even though it didn't bother me at all. It's fine, I wasn't that hungry, but I still have time to eat. No, I'm fine, don't worry about it. Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, I can taste it more that way. I was trying to make little Mitro feel better, but somehow our positions got reversed. It was nice to know that she was thinking about me too, but I was older than her, not to mention her elder brother. Thanks, Mitru. Anyways, I'm gonna go eat now. Itarashai. Also, I might be home late, but Didi will be coming home right after school's over. Yeah, but I feel like that'd be very lonely. But like, what are you what are you using to bathe your time with? I'm not lonely. Every time she said that, it only made me worry about her even more. I had no idea if being home alone was really a lonely thing. Mitra's always been by my side, so I've never felt any sort of loneliness from being on my own. I couldn't understand it myself, but I had a hunch that little Mitra was only pretending to be cheerful. I could tell she was trying not to worry about me or Mitra. You're a strong girl, Mitra. I want to see you soon, though, so I'll be home as fast as I can. Okay, see you in a little while. Bye bye. Gosh, she is so cute, guys. What the heck? Oh, she's such a good little sister. I can imagine a little Mitra in my room waving goodbye to me as I hit the end call button. I I was told I'm weird for doing that. Sometimes I like I'll make gestures and stuff when I'm talking to someone on the phone, and I'll kind of like act like I'm waving goodbye to somebody. I don't do that all the time, but with certain people I will. Is that weird? Am I weird for doing that when they can't even see me? I just try to get into the motion of it. I'm trying to feel like I'm talking to someone, even though it's over the phone. <sighs> I don't want to be the one to hang up, but I just would just bother her more if I talked to her for too long. What kind of a sorry excuse of a man I am making a child worry about me like that? I guess I shouldn't waste the lunch time she was so concerned about. In any case, once I get home, I'll have plenty of time to talk to her and make up for all that time she spent feeling lonely. Oh, dang, we haven't seen her in a while. How's it going? When I hung up and turned around, I saw Misaki looking at me with a surprised expression on her face. How could I explain the expression she had? It's the kind of face an unpopular boy's sister would make if he suddenly brought home a girlfriend. The kind of face that would make if Mitra suddenly brought home a boyfriend. Oh, that's a very, very shocked face. Misaki had never looked at me with some sort of that sort of expression before. Yes, Misaki. Dang, Misaki is jealous of other girls, and it's not even her route. Well, my prediction was spot on. Of course not, I don't even have a girlfriend. Wow, we need to talk nicer to people, guys. <laughs> really, I didn't even realize. Maybe that just happened naturally when I'm talking to little Michiru. Yeah, because I was. Well, you're bang on about that. It was a little kid. Oh, no, Misaki, no. 
Misaki, you're going back to when we first started the novel and you said really dumb things all the time, which I loved, so actually I'm okay with it. <laughs> Ray's response was golden. I love I love everything about this response. You married your girlfriend and now she's part of your family. She's already a relative, so she was family in the first place. <laughs> Misaki, you're so dumb. We love a guy knocking off with that girlfriend. Girl. I don't even understand! Is there something I don't know about who you're dating right now? <laughs> Wait, where was this, Misaki? Where was this <laughs> in your route? That was one thing I will say I missed during her route. I felt like she, she had a lot more of this humor and just kind of outbursts in just the kind of common route and things like that. And maybe even the shared route too. What's she yelling at me for? She called me a jerk ass. Now that's just unfair. I, I kind of miss seeing that more in her route because we got to see more of her serious side, which was great too, but I love Misaki when she's just saying dumb things. <laughs> it just just keeps going. Last thing I need to right now is for Misaki to be spreading rumors about me. I managed to convince her that I wasn't on the phone with my girlfriend or anything, but... So what? <laughs> I piqued her curiosity about it, but it wasn't something I needed to keep a secret in the first place. And I sure as hell didn't want to jump back into the previous conversation either. She's the daughter of a relative of mine. She's staying in her place right now owing to circumstances, so to speak. Didn't you hear about her from Michiro? <sighs> Michiro, why would you say that? Why? I know it's true, but why would you say that? Okay, well, it's not true. It's true in her mind, but it's not true in general, okay? Let's clarify here. Rival Mitru, what the hell were you doing referring to a child that way? Though, if you thought about it, it was sort of like she declared herself to be her own worst enemy. That sounded pretty awesome. Misaki narrowed her eyes suspiciously. Oh crap, being part of the Ando family, she might actually know the Sawatari family tree. If that were the case, saying she's one of my relatives might invite undue suspicion. Wait, hold that thought. She's still a young girl, but she looks like Mitru did when she was a child. She just that none of us are home when we have school, you know? We had to leave her to watch the household by herself today. If she's somewhat familiar with the Sawatari family, then maybe they'd know how our family's a bit dysfunctional at times. She probably wouldn't have any reason to use that information against the Sawatari name anyways. I have a feeling Rei is way overthinking this, and she's be like, okay, and just move on. As expected, Misaki didn't know how to respond to that one. I was amb ambulant about deceiving her, but I had no other choice. I had no other choice, but I still wanted to make a conversation to brush away my ambulance. The subject. I need to change the subject. Oh, that's right. Oh, Misaki, I was just thinking about buying a present for the girl I told you about. What kind of present do you think would be best? <laughs> If I did know and they'd be asking you about it, would I? In a flash, Misaki's face lit up and then she intentionally cleared her throat. <clears throat> More screen time with Misaki. Let's freaking go. Really, that would help a lot. Okay, then I'll see you after school today. Yeah, the sooner the better, right? She only just showed up the night before and all. This is her first day being home alone, so I wanted to give her a present. I wanted to quell those lonely feelings of hers. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'll go alone then. Oh, no. What do you think I asked you to go in the first place? Makoto and her friends gave me some advice, too. I might just ask Mitra to come along, too. I tried to reassure her, but the expression on her face still seemed to say she didn't believe me. Oddly enough, her fists were shaking as well. Her fists shook more and more until she finally had to blow off her frustration. She stomped her feet against the ground and howled in anger. I like how I like how Misaki is still trying to get with us, and it's not even her route. But this is why she's best girl, guys. I 
hadn't seen Misaki act that childish in a while, it was rather soothing to watch. Uh, Misaki, you don't need to worry about it that much, okay? If you could just give me a few pointers on what would be the best to get... What would be best to get for her, then it, that'll be more than enough for me to work with. Why do you need to make that sound? Uh? Why, why do you need to do that? It's fun to watch Misaki griping like this, but it wasn't giving me any more time to eat my lunch. Little Mitra didn't want me to miss lunch after all, I guess I should head back to the classroom. Yeah, why are you getting so frustrated about it, Misaki? After I finished eating, I got a text from Misaki. It had a lot of advice regarding a present from Little Mitra, which turned out to be very helpful. It was weird to get such an intense message from Misaki, but I didn't worry about it too much. Do do do, going to get a present for Michiru. Do 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 do. Not long afterwards, classes came to an end and school let out. I stopped by Michiru's classroom to pick her up, and then we headed for the shopping district. Um, it wasn't that long ago because you were on our date with um. Let's see, was it Misaki? It was the date with Misaki. That's that's what made me want to play Mi Michiru's route, because, like, Michiru was in so much of Misaki's route. It felt like they were just... Well, they, they literally were competing, in a, in a way. So, I feel like she was just such a big part of it. I was like, eh, I might as well do Michiru's route next. Why not? Last I checked, not all that long. Nevertheless, I had spent time alone with Michiru after school in quite a while. <laughs> I wouldn't let you go either way. I mean, it's pretty crowded around here. But when I go to pick out a present, I'll have to let go of you then. I would like to see you try. But if you think you can do it, go for it. Even if we're not shopping for presents, I don't mind going out with you. Mitra's not all that fond of crowds, and it's dangerous for her to go out alone. So are we gonna give her something? Here, take this for your adventure. Like she said, if the opportunity hadn't presented itself, Mitra probably wouldn't have wanted to leave the house. Mitra would have definitely come along with me if I had told her I wanted to hang out somewhere outside. But for her to go outside with her own objective in mind was quite a rare thing. Well, even if I'm not holding your hand, I'll be right here for you. <laughs> That's because you're acting like a good big sister. She agreed to go shopping for a present for little Mitra, but she was seriously considering what to get after all. My little sister was helping to buy a present for my other little sister, so I wanted to be a good big brother myself. That's all she thinks about, guys. She's only thinking about how can I use little Mitra to increase my infection with my brother. Absolutely adorable. I think what's gonna happen here, and I'm just, I don't know if it will, but I think it might, is we're gonna take little Mitru out, because I feel like it'd be kind of a shame to never take her outside and just keep her at the house all the time. I think we're gonna take her out, and Mitru, and, and it's gonna be kind of like we're the parents. People are gonna be like, oh, is that your daughter? Because, you know, it looks like her. Kind of looks like us. I think that's what's gonna happen. And it's gonna be really weird. Hey, knock it off. this <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you said you were going to behave. Mitra responded to my disappointed tone with a childish, joking smile. Neither of us were being serious. Mitra had gotten the idea to get her younger self a present before I'd even invited her along. Had it been... Had it not been for her advice, I wouldn't have been able... Had any idea of what kind of animated films or picture books to buy for her. <sighs> kind of like to buy a doll for her, too. What do you think? Well, it is you, so I would hope you know what she likes best. Now that you mentioned, I guess that suggestion did come up. Why don't we just get her a stuffed version of myself? I suppose for a girl who's staying at home alone, that'd be a better choice. I'd probably have a lot... They'd probably have a lot of that Storm of Kota was stone transpired, and that memory returned to me. I headed in the direction of a... The aforesaid store. Dasamo Muti. 
a small month. Moti? I don't know. The huge stuffed animal on the counter was gone, but in its place was a row of stuffed animals that seemed to be a part of the same series. Ooh, we get one of these. Every time I see this, I just think of freaking Cafe Stella. It, it, it has a very similar style to those kind of kind of CGs that they have. Hey, Mitro, what kind of stuffed animal do you think would be best? <laughs> Hmm, I'll do my best for what it's worth. Makoto and Misaki gave me a few pointers about it. Though having several different recommendations from them was making me hesitate a little bit. Suppose a guy like me wouldn't have the same kind of taste. I bought Mitru presents in the past, but since we were the same age, we had more in common with each other. Hmm, w which one do you guys like best? Real quick. Um... A turtle is very interesting. I'm kind of going for like, I don't know, is that a squirrel in the in the middle shelf right there? Well, I guess it's kind of the third shelf up, but it has the scarf on it. I think that one would be cute. Or I think, are, th are those supposed to be dogs or like, why does the dog have a butthole? Why do they, why do they put a butthole on their animals? No stuffed animal here in America has a butthole, but apparently in Japan, they all have buttholes. Anyways, getting a little sidetracked here. Not only that, we never have gone shopping together to buy a gift for someone else like this before. Hugging a stuffed animal, eh? First thing that came to mind was a squirrel. And right after that, a bear. See? They picked out the squirrel that I picked out? Okay. Either one of them was Sue, or which one should I choose, though? Hey, Mitru, do you think little Mitru would like a squirrel or a bear more? That doesn't help. It should be easier to pick if one uh, would make her happy. I wanted to make the best choice possible. And it was hard to eliminate either option because they all look so cute sitting on the counter with all those other dolls in the series. Yeah, I can't argue with that logic. Suppose so. Which one would suit little Mitra well? I to imagine that either one of those would suit her, so that just made things more problematic. The squirrel would emphasize her beauty, whereas the bear would make uh, me think of her smile. I wanted to see both, so I didn't know what to do. Well, it depends. I, I feel like a big stuffed bear would be more for, like, just having on your bed or just being able to hug it. Whereas, I feel like the tiny squ squirrel would be more something you could, like, play with and, like, you know, have it running around and stuff, you know? It just depends if she's that kind of kid that likes to imagine and, and you know, play with animals or if she rather would, like, hug the bear and, like, think of her brother. Owing to her blindness, Mitru was more aware of things she couldn't see. Or maybe it was because she's a girl. I took a few different stuffed animals down from the shelf and touched them to verify the texture of their fur. Some felt fluffy, the others felt silky, but all of them felt pleasant. Alright, beside, I'll get the bear. Dang it! Well, so close, boys. So close. Both of them would suit little Mitru, but thinking of which one would bring her greater comfort while she's alone, the bear would be the better option. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't want to keep little Mitru waiting. The fact that Mitru didn't ask me to spend more time alone with her might have been a sign that, little by little, she was changing, too. Yeah, alright. I'll go buy it. Since I was happy to see this change in her, I walked up to the register and asked to buy two stuffed animals. Ooh, are we buying them both? I'd be happy if we bought both, because that way I could be right. Tadaima! Tadaima I headed in the direction of my room while announcing my presence, of which I heard the sound of tiny footsteps racing toward me in response. Gosh, she just like appeared out of nowhere. Did you see that? She was just like, whoosh, whoosh, just right up in our face. Whoa, there you're full of pep, little Michiru. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You weren't lonely? Is that so, good girl? I wonder how how little is little Mitru? Does she is she not supposed to be like of school age? She doesn't go to school yet. It must be like four then. 
Because she, she looks pretty decently sized. I want to say she's, like, tiny or anything. Little Mitra clung to me, a great big smile blasted on her face. Wow, now she's actually sympathizing with her. She's like, yeah, I understand you. Well, Mitru knowingly nodded her head at Mitru's words. You two get along well. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's anybody in the world you can relate to, it's yourself. Hey, quit it. Mitra showed me a mischievous smile and I ended up having to smile back instead of scolding her any further. Mitra's sense of humor is rather vague at times, so I had a feeling she was half serious about that one. Picked it out together with Mitra. We hope you'll like it. I handed one of the bags I've been carrying to little Mitra who took the gift into her small arms. So wholesome, guys. So wholesome. Saying you're like so grateful for this. Too big for such a small girl to hold, but her smile seemed to become directly proportional to the size of the stuffed animal in her hands. Yes, of course. And I gave her an approving nod. Nichiru fumbled with the packaging while she opened it. I thought it suited you. What do you think? Little Michiru hugged the stuffed animal tightly and showed us a big smile. It warmed my heart to see her wearing that childish smile on her face. Don't run or you'll trip. Little Michiru replied cheerfully, and then we heard her cute little footsteps running off in the direction of Didi's room, right before she fell over. After watching her leave, I turned my attention to Michiru. It seemed like she wanted to say something. I mean, you did help me pick it out. Oh, she really did say I bought little Mitra a present a minute ago on purpose, after all. So I have not mentioned that you did help me pick it out, after all. Yeah, but it, it's from you, too, right? Not at all, but she seemed happy about it either way. I could kind of understand why she wasn't satisfied. If it were Mitra in that situation, she would have been happy to receive a present just from me. For me, it was more important that my own feelings got conveyed to her as well. I don't know. I just, I just think it's respectful to, to include people. If somebody did the work, don't just say, hey, I did the work. Say, we did the work. I, I, I feel like that's just common sense, right? Like, you, you try to include people who deserve credit. Taking me true by the hand, I passed the other bag I've been holding to her. Oh, yes, we bought it! Let's go! Ooh, and we're giving it to Big Michiru. The one I bought uh, for you, we were going out to buy my little sister present day, after all, both of you, that is. I thought it suited you. It's comforting to the touch, so it should feel nice when you cuddle with it. Her response sounded a bit clumsy, as if she didn't know what to say. When I saw Mitru like that, it made me trip over my own words as well. Not only that, I couldn't decide which one would suit little Mitru the best. So I picked out the one that suited you the best, and then I naturally knew which one would suit little Mitru too. I imagined the big sister and the little sister holding stuffed animals together, and I felt that these ones both matched you perfectly. Why was I trying to make excuses for myself now? I gave a present to my younger sister, so I wanted to give the oldest sister a present too. That should be good enough. <laughs> What a thoughtful guy. Ray is such a nice, outstanding guy, isn't he? Mitra's amazed and confused expression slowly turned into a smile as she started to calm down. She definitely didn't say that to criticize me, rather, she seemed to be basking in the pleasant warmth for the moment. The youngest sister was the only one to get a present, then the older one would be sad, wouldn't she? Both of you are my incomparably precious little sisters. It's kind of nice seeing Mitra, like, genuinely happy. I do feel bad sometimes, and, and I 
I kind of, like, feed into it as well with, with Rey. Like, we both kind of, like, pick on her for, like, being overly attached to her brother. But at the same time, like, I feel like she just genuinely loves Rey. Like, incest aside, just, like, as, as his sister. Like, she just really, like, deeply cares about him and, like, appreciates when he goes out of his way to do something for her. I just think that's sweet. It's, it's pretty wholesome. Clutching the gift against her chest, weren't as small as little Mitru's. Her gleeful expression, however, was exactly the same. So you guys better not fight too much. She seemed to be a little dissatisfied with that conclusion, so she put her forehead against my shoulder. That childish mannerism was so cute, I immediately pulled her into my arms. Well, just to try to remember that it makes me happy when you two get along. In other words, she tried to get along, and she didn't seem dissatisfied with that conclusion. It's not like they were on such bad terms to begin with, with today's events to get a little closer than they were before. Okay, I know that. I will say, this, this route has been rather wholesome, except for the beginning. Uh, when she literally pounced on us and, and pinned us down. She knows what her face in my chest and let a soft sigh. Mitru basking her happiness didn't hug me back. She was still clutching her precious presence slightly against her chest. Well, I'm glad that we got them both something. I think that was a that was a wise move on Ray's part. I'm really glad he did that. Our sentimental moment was interrupted by eager footsteps that came racing back towards us, but I didn't mind being interrupted. Mitra and I were both looking forward to all the time the three of us were going to be spending together. After we got changed out of our uniforms, the three of us naturally gathered in my room. Like we always do, because everyone interrupts us in our room. We're just hanging out. Or they try to sleep on us, or pin us down in our room, and we're just chilling. Little Mitru sat right next to me, hugging her own stuffed animal with rapturous delight. She'd given it a cutesy nickname, and her eyes were sparkling. So wonderful, she truly was adorable. It was worth agonizing over this present, if it had made her this happy. You're welcome, I see you know how to say thank you and everything, too. Good girl. Little Mitru really is such a good girl. She's polite and can take her out in public without being embarrassed about her behavior. And the way she happily played with her stuffed animal and she flipped through the picture book just as any other child would was just too darn cute for words. Mitru was sat on the other side of me with Little Mitru on the other, effectively flanking me from all directions. Mitru smiled, but the smile seemed to be a scheming one. Huh? That wasn't enough. I already thanked you earlier since you helped me pick out the present and all. I thought it was unfair if Mitru didn't get a present too, and it was also my way of thanking her for a lot of different things. Please don't tell me you're gonna thank me with your body or something stupid like that. Mitru showed me a wry smile as she gently hugged the stuffed animal to her chest. You don't need to do that. Well, that's a much tamer way of than you normally would offer. You just wanted to do that all along, didn't you? Uh, it would, but still. The moment she said that, Mitru lashed onto my arm. She hugged me in a different way from her stuffed animal since she was trying to press her body against me. <laughs> don't be bullying your younger self, okay, Michiru? Hey, you don't need to make up that kind of reason for it. If you two are gonna fight over that, I have something to tell you. They both hastily bowed their heads, but they 
they were misunderstanding me. You're both my little sisters, so you don't need to be restrained. As they both looked to me, mystified, I put my hands on both their shoulders and drew them into my embrace. I gently combed my fingers through little Mitra's hair, patted Mitra on the back to soothe her, and looked at both of them in turn. You don't need to hold back, so just try to get along, alright? They both nodded, yes, good. Gosh, it's like we're trying to comfort two children here. They almost got into another quarrel over nothing, but I was glad to see them resolve their differences so quickly. The warm atmosphere made it feel like we were a real family. This was something I hadn't felt in a long time, and it set me at ease. Yeah, of course. I took my hands off them in order to grab the book, and one of them growled with dissatisfaction. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder who that was. But my hands had to be free to read the book. You guys can lay on my lap if you want. I think we're giving too much to Mitsu. She's getting a little excited. Hey, hey, hey little Mitsu is here. You need to calm down. This is just ordinary physical affection between siblings. You gotta touch me anywhere weird in your name's mud. <laughs> Don't hurry up, you'll miss out. <laughs> oh gosh. Please don't moan like that when you're sitting on my lap. Can we not? <laughs> Stop making weird noises. So they felt a little anxious. Maybe I've been too hasty here. So I went with a different position instead. Gosh. Never mind. I, I regret everything. I regret this whole situation. Now we have two evil Mitras. <sighs> no, they're cute, so this is fine. This is also a good way of convincing them to put aside their differences. <laughs> I swear, Didi, if you come in here and ask to sit on my lap too, I'll lose it. Oh, now you decide to act like a proper maid. I see through you, Dee Dee. I lost track of time as I enjoyed that happy moment. Little Mitra played enough for today, so it was time for her to go to bed. I listened to what she was doing, and I could tell that she was still playing with her stuffed bear my brother had with the stuffed bear my brother had given her. Oh, is this from uh, her perspective? So the stuffed squirrel that he gave to me, which was intended to go together with that one the little Mitra got. Surely he must have given us these gifts as a way of telling us to get along as well. Lomitru must uh, feel the love he has for us, too. I I can sense her happiness. Something is bothering me, however. My birthday is gradually approaching. I wonder if this gift will end up counting as my birthday present as well. I don't think so. I think he'll probably do something more sentimental, maybe, than, like, a physical gift. No, now is not the time for worrying about such things. She's like, wait a minute, why am I not sleeping with my brother? She's <laughs> Gosh, so demanding. Okay, can you at least be like somewhat normal around her? Like, stop being so weird. The guest bedroom had been prepared for Lomitra, but it seems she had no intention of sleeping there. Ergo, she would be sleeping in our rooms until she became accustomed to this place, though she would most likely return to her own time before that. You're literally the queen of envious improper situations. Had he not told her to sleep in my room, she probably... She would have already been crawling into his bed. 
Most vexingly of all, he did have good intentions to help me get along with little Michiru. No, little Michiru. No, don't betray me like this. How could the temptation be so hard to resist? Even my younger self is quite a wily creature indeed. <笑>私の部屋でとつけ加えていました。さすがです、兄様。私の行動などお見通しなのですね。できればもっとしていただきたいのですが。<笑> Mitra, I need you to stop trying to, to 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 get with my boy every second if possible. Oh dear, just the thought of it has gotten me excited. Calm yourself down, woman. Not sleep with the flame within me has been lit, so I must calm down and make an effort to convince little Mitra. Were we to go to my dear brother's room, we would not only end up bothering him, that is not what he would want. Both of three of us slept together, though I consider suggest that for next time. Were we to sleep on either side of him, I imagine he would not object to that. Gosh. I need to I need to I need to have a stick in here so I can bonk Michiru for being horny. Thought she was well aware I couldn't see, or perhaps she did not truly understand what it meant for someone to be able to un be unable to see. If that is the case, it could be a problem in the future. Yeah, isn't that sad to know that she's gonna eventually not be able to see either? I wonder if she's just gonna read it to her and just make it up. <laughs> Setting up, I went to the shelf and took down a book I had read countless times before. Oh, she just picked one. She memorized. That, that works too. My dearest brother had bought Little Mitra three different picture books, and it was not one of those which I was presently choosing, nor was it a book written in Braille. I could read it to her because I did not have to see it to remember its contents. Above all, it had pictures of its own, so it was certain to make a child happy. Wonder which book it is, then. She was a lovable, obedient little girl. I wanted our brother to tell her that, though. If I told her, it would just be complimenting myself. I put that thought aside and returned my focus to the book in my hands. I flipped through the pages as I read out the story that my brother had once read to me. As I did, the memories of that time flowered in my mind. It was a time when my world had plunged into darkness. It was a time when I felt nothing but despair at everything and believed that I was truly alone. It was a time when a precious person in my life was able to grant me happiness. While all this was in my past now was a future that little Mitra had yet to experience. Remembering that time, my previous frustration with little Mitra disappeared, like smoke with a breeze. I could almost feel the anxiety from that time in my life creeping up from the floorboards. Will she become the same as me? Was I such a good girl when I was her age? Will she be able to become the same as me, or will she shut her heart away from happiness when the light disappears from her world? Does she really have to become the same as me? Is there no way for her to grow up without losing sight of the radiant world around her? That is impossible. The mysterious girl had told us that our meeting would eventually draw to a close to be remembered as but a dream. If I had told her about her future, she would forget it. Is there any meaning to telling her then? Would it be alright for me to tell her, even if I had believed she'd remember it? It's nice that she's thinking about her in that way, though. Oh, those two are getting along awfully well. Seeing Mitra and Little Mitra together, this was far from the first time I found myself making that comment. I had proposed the idea of allowing Little Mitra to alternate between sleeping in my room and sleeping in Mitra's room. I wonder if I should have gone with them. It was too late, though, since they were probably already sleeping. An hour had passed already since I last thought of going to see if they were awake, and even though I didn't want to bother them. <laughs> I don't know, in a game about time travel, I suppose I do. Same to you, what brings you here at this hour anyways? The ghost appeared right at the stroke of midnight. Hmm, why? I tried to ask her what's going on, but she had already disappeared. She's still every bit of a spur of the moment one, as I see. Oh, Michiru. 
I guess so. I was just thinking about stuff. In any case, what are you awake for, too? Well, that's what kept you up this late, then. Good work. Mitru smiled when I said that, but her face looked kind of tired. Well, it's good practice. Should I put her to bed from now on? Well, that's good to hear, but... Start at Mitra's face. Seemed like she wanted to talk about something else. Anyways, why don't you sit down? Sat on the porch and patted the spot next to me. This is nice. We get to have a little midnight conversation that hopefully will be relatively lighthearted and not perverted. But you never know. Mitra and I sat next to each other under the light of the moon, basking in the cool evening air. We sat in silence and I didn't want... I didn't rush Mitra to speak about whatever was bothering her. Cloudy watched the stars twinkle and the clouds stream by, and the wind blew through the trees. And suddenly I felt a warm touch on my shoulder. Mitra had reduced the distance between us by resting her head on my shoulder. Mitra briefly hesitated as she slowly began to speak. Is it too hard to act like her big sister? I mean, if she's you from the past, doesn't that make her the same as the present day you? Didn't expect to hear Mitru say she felt anxious. Never showed in her words or attitude before that moment. Could it be her blindness that's making her feel so anxious, could it? No, that's, that, ha that has to be it. Yeah, would that be a problem if little Mitru knew that she was blind? Would that seem like it was an inevitability for her? Maybe make her depressed? この時間のことは覚えていられないそうですが、もしもの可能性がありますから、覚えていられるとしたら、伝えることがいい結果につながるのか。You're too kind, Mitru. Put my hand on Mitru's head, drew her closer, and combed her, my fingers through her hair. Was she thanking me for my words or for my actions? Either way, Mitru was cute as she snuggled in closer to me, but more than that, she looked very fragile. Seems somewhat difficult for her to admit that of little Mitru. Well, I guess this is like... Oh, sorry, I'm just, she's still talking. I guess this is a matter of, is she gonna retain all these memories of everything that happened here when she goes back? That, that would kind of change your approach, because it wouldn't really matter how you approach it if she forgets, right? But earlier they had mentioned something about when she goes back, this will probably all seem like a dream to her. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess if she had a dream about her older self being blind, maybe that would be kind of depressing knowing that that might be what's heading for you. You'd maybe always have that in the back of your mind, and then you'd feel worse once that actually happened. Because I'm assuming her becoming blind is inevitability. I'm, I'm sure, like, in this other world line, I'm, I'm not sure what to, to call it, um, she'll probably become blind, too. It's just kind of an something that will happen. It doesn't seem like anything that's happening here will change too much in the other timeline, but maybe she'll have that thought of, oh, I had that dream when I was younger that I became blind. I don't know. It just it just matters how much in what's happening here is going to affect her elsewhere. 
Telling little Mitra about our future might heighten her anxiety for that time. Maybe she'd be happier if we didn't tell her. That's a good question. I mean, I don't think there's really a good answer to that. This isn't really a situation that happens in reality. That's quite a problem. If I met the past version of me, I wonder if I would warn him about the mistakes he would end up making. Or if I met a future version of me, would I ask him to help me avoid any misfortunes which lay in my own future? I could sit here and daydream about it forever, but if I actually have him, my answers to those questions might change. What would I think if I actually play was placed in such a situation? Yeah, I think that's likely. I think that she'll probably either write it off as a dream or, or just forget about it. I also think, um, it's kind of what Ray was saying. Like, if, if I was actually in a situation like that, my answers to a theoretical question would definitely change because now it's a reality. You know, you can daydream about it all you want. Like, oh, you know, if I could talk to my younger self, I would tell them this, this, and this. But in reality, if that actually happened, you'd probably do something slightly different, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think Ray, Ray is definitely on the right track here. And then, yeah, Mitrio pointing that out, I think, is good. Because I think that's probably, as, as Crow thinks, the likeliest outcome. <laughs> Even Crow herself didn't have a complete understanding of the pocket watch's inner workings. Little Mitru didn't come from the same timeline as Mitru, which meant we couldn't entirely rule out any possibility. Until Mitru mentioned that possibility, I never gave it a second thought. Just like Mitru, I'd never seriously considered my own past and future before, so you don't know if you should tell her then. I might have told my younger self without thinking too hard about it. Which I really thought about it, though, I, I couldn't say which was better. What should she do? I don't know, Mitra is a very honest person, I feel like it, she's not the kind of person that would hide something like that, she would kind of embrace it and maybe um, make the best out of it, so I feel like she's going to probably end up telling little Mitra. Gazing at Mitra sitting beside me, the answer came like a bolt of blue. If a dilemma cannot be understood from one's own perspective, perhaps imagining the same situation from another's point of view would help. If you were in her place, what would you want to be told about the future? I think I would want to know. I mean, that that that's my opinion as as an adult. I would want to know, but I feel like as a as a young kid, you would of course want to know your future, right? You would have that kind of childlike innocence and be like, oh, well, I would totally want to know my future. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna do this or this? You know, you would probably start making assumptions. If it were me, I'd hesitate to answer that question, but you wouldn't, would you? But then again, we're going back to the situation of, I'm saying it right now, but if I was actually in that situation, my my answer and decision would be different, possibly. But as of right now, as an adult, I feel like that's something I would just say. I wouldn't say it with the intention of the, like, oh, this is going to happen to you too. I would say it as like, hey, this is just my reality. I'm, I'm blind. I mean, you don't need to make it about the future, per se. Mitra sighed deeply after responding to my words. When she looked up at me again, there was a soft smile upon her lips. Because I'm just thinking, like, if she really is, is going to be blind in the future, I think it would be a better example to set that Mitru shows that, hey, I'm blind, I embrace it, you know, I'm making the best out of it, I'm trying to still be a great person and still trying to be capable of doing many things. I think showing her, like, a what could be looked at as a bleak future as one that's happy and, and full of, of opportunities for her, I think would be setting a better example than not telling her and just having things happen, you know? Or, or telling her and, and just not really explaining that, you know, I've tried to make the best out of it and making my life um, what I want it to be, even though I have this challenge, per se. I don't think telling her would be deciding, though. Because, see, if you go this route, though, you're risking having her find out, and then I feel like that would be more of a problem than just telling her and just being honest about it. I can respect that, though. There would be some who'd call that indecisive. 
そのようなことはございません私に選ばせてくださったことに感謝しております I wouldn't say it's indecisive. She made a very clear decision. Like, hey, I'm not going to tell her because I don't want it to decide her future. Now, while I personally disagree with, with the decision, it ultimately doesn't matter because it's not my decision to make. So, I'm just voicing my thoughts and my opinion on it. I'm not saying that she's necessarily wrong. I'm just trying to explain my side and my reasoning for what I would do. I don't know. What do you all think? Let, let me know in the comments. Do you agree with Michiru's stance of not saying anything、um, in order to like, not, not kind of decide her future for her? Or, or would you be someone who would lean more towards telling her and just letting it happen? Whatever happens, happens. Michiru bowed deeply to me. Her mind was made up. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to downplay how, how bad blindness is. Like, I, I'm really trying to respect that it is something that can be crippling. It, it can definitely, well, it not can, it will definitely change your life. But I think Mitsu would be better off showing her that there are still happy times in her life rather than hiding from it, you know? <laughs> But it sounds like she recognizes that. So, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay her decision. I'm not trying to say she's wrong. I'm just saying I have a different opinion. I have a different view on it. But ultimately, her opinion on it matters more because it literally affects her. And like I said, I think she could. Still choose her own future either way, but. m i t r o showed me a childish smile. Just as he did for me was such an unvoiced thought apparent in her gaze. Well, I just hope he's a dependable kind of big bro. どんなに険しい道でも兄様の手を引いてくださるなら幸福な旅路になりましょう逆に兄様がいないのでしたらおそらく一人で歩くことはできないでしょうね私から結末を告げても幸せな未来が待っていると告げても視力を失うかもしれ
uh, we don't exactly know what's gonna happen after this this time. So it's like, why why overthink it, you know? For the reason I decided I need to do something to help her. For seeing Mitsuru wallowing in her despair compelled me to make me to want to make her happy. I had been charmed by Michiru. Her eyes shone like the moonlight as she looked completely through me. I couldn't look away, but it wasn't all that easy to look directly into her eyes either. I don't remember doing anything that incredible. All I could do was take a deep breath and downplay her compliment. Otherwise, I might have lost myself within those words which made my heart beat faster within my chest. I'm not embarrassed. Ah, oh, damn it! Is the evening breeze supposed to be cooling me off? I was happy to help Mitra work for her own problems, but now I gain a new problem of my own in their stead. She saw right through me. Uh, I guess you're right. Yeah, I'll agree with her on this. Maybe maybe that's ultimately the best decision, not lead on too much about the future and just kind of leave it open-ended. Like I said, I don't think she's wrong. I just say I have a different opinion and a different perspective than her, and that's what makes us human, right? Like, we all have different ideas, different thoughts on things, different views, we have different backgrounds. That's what makes us who we are. Then I'll do just that. I'll just focus on making her happy for the time being. Wouldn't dream of forgetting that. I'm pretty sure you just said I'm the only one who can make you happy after all. I can't respond to all of your feelings just yet, but I intend to do what I can. The flushed redness of Mitra's face was plainly visible in the moonlight. By the same token, Mitra was no doubt aware of how intensely my heart was pounding as she snuggled closer to me. Me too, just being with you makes me happy. It felt good to know that we were finally sharing our true feelings. It was a warm, comfortable feeling. For a long while, I simply held Mitsuru tight as she rested her head on my chest. That was a good conversation, though. I liked, I liked the, the theoretical and them really like trying to get through um, what was the best decision for that. And I hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing my kind of perspective and my kind of counter thoughts. I'm not like trying to disprove Michiru. I'm not trying to say, oh, you did the wrong decision. I'm just trying to uh, understand the argument from both sides. And I, I feel a little bit differently, and that's okay, because it's a visual novel, and who cares? But ultimately, I like to to think about those things, and, and they're good thought exercises. Anyways, guys, still going through Mitru's route, still going good. I like that we're getting a little bit more serious moments in here, also, while still having the funny ones, like Misaki earlier, that was great. And then just seeing the interactions between Mitru and Little Mitru is always enjoyable. Anyways, guys, though, I'm going to end it here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are enjoying Mitru's route. I know a lot of you were very excited for me to play this, and I think it's going really well. So very excited to continue it, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one.